Hello my Soccer Universe and ta-da! I got this today, the unpacking video you will see uh, tomorrow for this one, but since my La Liga Liga uh, Primera Liga uh, review is usually the least watched video of the week, although it's the one that I almost have to put the most work in and I love doing it because I love uh, watching uh, at least highlights from at least two if not three of these leagues I decided yes I'm gonna wear this new brand new I just got it I unpacked it this is the first time it makes an appearance on my channel it's a sporting jersey which I needed for uh, this background and what a beauty it is you will see a little bit more in the video and yeah one headline is that sporting is very well on the way of, of getting the title since both Porto and Benfica dropped points. In La Liga, my big question, this is what I put up there in the title, is Sevilla the second best team in the league? I think we can make a good argument for that and I know the last time I asked something about Sevilla they took a downward spiral so I hope I don't jinx them this time. But at the moment of shooting this video, I actually would argue that Sevilla is the second best team in the league after Atleti, for sure. Uh, Messi scoring two great goals is another headline and Real Madrid getting an easy win for a change. And then what a weird round it was in France. PSG the only top team that is winning and then many, many surprising results all over, over, over the place. Still PSG is not first, it's still uh, Lille but it's rather tight. So let's hop into what we had uh, this past week and we have to go all the way back to Wednesday where we had the Copa del Rey uh, first semifinal between Sevilla and Barcelona a game that I was really look, looking forward to and it was a darn interesting game uh, but one that I have to say really Sevilla showed that they are a better team than Barcelona and this is why I'm saying Sevilla at the moment is the second best team and, it also, and we all know that Atletico and Real Madrid is also not in there so just take a step back when it was the last time that they had, we could say that the two best teams in Spain are neither Barcelona or Real Madrid. In any case what I also remember is that Jules Conde uh, not only a great performance on the field but the way he has his goal coast to coast uh, he's got the goal with a coast to coast run pretty pretty impressive and Barcelona couldn't find a recipe against a very very sturdy um, uh, Sevilla team and Rakitic with a very nice finish in the 80 85th. Yeah, Rakitic, who just came from Barcelona, who actually didn't have that great of season, he decides it for Sevilla. In the other semi final, uh, Bilbao and Levante play out a 1 1 draw, didn't see much of that one. In the league, <sighs> I would love to tell more, but I actually didn't see all that much. I want to know Celta Vigo gets the first win of the year, finally, for the team that actually probably almost like most in La Liga, who knows. Um, but Atletico Madrid had to really, really suffer to get their win over Granada. Granada, a very um, unpleasant opponent to play against with. Uh, Llorente gives Atletico their lead in 63rd, Herrera three minutes later with kind of a lucky deflection goal and then Correa with an equally lucky deflection uh, gets Atleti the win and this is one of those wins where yeah, you know you're on the way to a cha championship when you can actually pull out a win like that. Sevilla with a rather unexciting 1-0 win over Huesca but you know Champions League is coming, you played the big one against Gans just get the three points in uh, Muni El Atadi getting the goal. Um, Barcelona looked good at the half uh, time. Trincao getting the first goal. Messi with an incredibly precise shot going from one post to the other and then in and then the ball stops there. Uh, that was actually pretty re remarkable. He had a goal allowed, did, did this allow for the offside before that. But then right after that, uh, Roch, Rioja made I made it 1-2 and there was a maybe a little shaky moment, at least from what I saw the highlights. I didn't actually watch the game because I had the pleasure of watching Milan. Ah, should have watched this one. But then, as soon as uh, Barcelona tur turns on, within five minutes they score five goals. Trincao after Messi assist and Messi with a great shot uh, just a minute later. And then Junior Firpo. Griezmann had a chance that probably should have won me one. But what, that was an easy win for Barcelona. Real Sociedad finding the form again, 1-0 over Getafe and then Real Madrid with a rather easy win 
I mean, the 2 0 scoreline is way too little. It should have been much higher. Valencia did not really show up. Bonsema and a typical Tony Cross goal give them a 2 0 lead. Uh, Mondi goal was disallowed. I think it could have been many, 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 many more goals for Real Madrid. Valencia really looking bad. Um, and I think a very remarkable result, two remarkable results at the end. Didn't see how they are. Betis beating Villarreal. Villarreal, mm, just when I thought they might ch a challenge, the same thing with Real Sociedad earlier. They are uh, uh, tailing off a little bit. And Bilbao, ever since they have the new coach, Marcelino, they're actually really good. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if they end up uh, in the European spots, uh, the way they are developing. Formula Cadiz is a pretty uh, impressive scoreline. Which means in the table, yes, Atletico Madrid is on top uh, with a 70% chance of winning the league. Barcelona getting a little bit better, uh, having also a game in hand over Real Madrid. But I, I don't think that Barcelona will challenge it. might be like it has been for years, or like two or three seasons ago, when Barcelona had a big lead over Atletico Madrid, and they meet, and then the, the, the whole thing is settled. Sevilla, I actually think, can... If they keep the form that the current currently have, I think Sevilla could definitely make a case to uh, get into uh, the positions, uh, maybe even finish second, which would be huge. Real Sociedad coming back as well over Villarreal. Villarreal needs to be careful. As I said, Bilbao is rising. They were really uh, low at the beginning of the, of the season. I think they could, they potentially, I, I would say they could catch Villarreal and or Real Sociedad on the bottom. It looks rather... Dim for Valladolid Elche and Uesca. With all these uneven games, although a little bit will be evened out uh, over, over the midweek, we gotta adjust. Bilbao moving already in ninth, and you know, 1.3 average, bet this is 1.4, then 1.7, 1.6. This is doable. This is doable. I think Bilbao can really move up there. As for expected points, yeah, uh, Bilbao will stay uh, in 8 according to this one. But uh, look at it, it really looks um, rather decided, the uh, top places. I mean, whether Barcelona or Real Madrid finish first, that's maybe the most in 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 interesting here. But it's very, very neatly all arranged. On the bottom, it all seems pretty clear who are the bottom three teams. On midweek game, uh, Levante Atletico Madrid, so we will get... We will uh, let's see if Atletico Madrid will get that win. This is from round two, so this is a long way out. And then uh, we have on the weekend. Let's see we have what interesting games we have. Atletico Madrid meeting Levante again. Uh, interestingly enough, Barcelona against Cardiff. Uh, they need to make up something there for sure. Why the Real Madrid is also not that exciting. Then a little Basque girl there with uh, Real Sociedad Alaves. Ah, Valencia, Celta, I mean, that's not really, I mean, Bilbao, Villarreal seems to be probably the biggest game and I think it has a really good spot there. Uh, and let's see if what Atletico will get out of the double with Levante. Moving on to the crazy weekend in France. The craziest thing for me were the jerseys for PSG. This was atrocious. I hate those jerseys. Please don't ever play in those again. I know, you will sell a whole lot of jerseys because there's a jump man on there. Horrible jerseys, horrible. And horrible was the performance of PSG. They still get the, uh, get the win over Nice. Draxler and Moise Ken getting uh, the goals. Uh, Ronnie Lopez can equalize like uh, early in the second half. But PSG, yes, they deserve the, the win. I think uh, Icardi uh, made two nice assists. But um, yeah, not more. Better move on. Um, rather surprising result, Lyon losing at home to Montpellier. Montpellier is a team that can hurt someone, but they also have been a little bit uh, tailing off. But Savani in the 20th gives them a lead and Lucas Paqueta can equalize. But Vahi gets the win, uh, gets the winner for Montpellier and Lyon can find a way back. That's a huge blow for a blow for Lyon, it has to has, has say that. And then uh, we already see the next result, Monaco against Lorient. What the? I mean, I saw the... Um, Halas, Lorient is in a really, really, really good form. They get another point against the big team. Mofi scoring both goals. He also scored already the winner against PSG. In the seventh penalty, the 62nd uh, normal goal. Then uh, the goals for Monaco, Vincent Benyeda, uh, penalty penalty. And uh, he also scores the equalizer very, very late on, deep into stoppage time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mon Monaco also a little bit stalled. Not 
fired. I think Raymond Don Dominic get a win at Angers. Wow, that was unexpected. Uh, also popping Ren against Saint Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne winning this one. Hmm, came unexpected. Lille having a probably a good goal to eat this up because of an over eager referee where I think Joseph Font gets the ball here. And he calls hand play and calls the play dead because right off the bounce, Lil scores. Cannot find the goal against Brest. Nil, nil, and also Pujiran de Bordeaux against Marseille. So, uh, with Lyon draw, draw drawing points, PSG actually can go ahead. Half of them is now only one point shy of Lil boosting the chance of winning a championship that we all think they will get anyway. Monaco, uh, yeah, that's only theoretical chances to get the t uh, title. I don't think... If they will, will, will have won, I think they would still be in, in the running. Maybe they can go into Champions League qual qual qualification. The rest is it's rather, rather tight up until Brest and also on the bottom. I mean, it's between Lorient and Nantes. Maybe Strasbourg or saint Etienne and Nice could be pulled in there, maybe, but highly unlikely. Nîmes and Dijon seem to be foregone conclusions. Um, adjusting, yes, Marseille has a few games in hand, so uh, they move, of course, up. Uh, same thing on, on, on the ball, where Reims has a few more games than the others. Uh, just low, looking at the bars, we see that Lille and Monaco rather positive performances, where Strasbourg and Nantes are definitely on the negative end. PSG, slightly red. Not that. Uh, and as expected, the expected stands here PSG will win this league tight. Uh, Monaco, pretty certain of fourth place, and Lille and Olympique Lyon, who will go fix into the Champions League. Then this big, big midfield, and at the moment it really looks like Lorient and Nantes for probably both could stay in because they're the last ones at relegation spot, and the two relegated teams will be Nîmes and Dijon. We gotta see. Again, a lot of credit to Lance, their promoted team. And they're hanging in there quite, 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 quite well. In the midweek, Marseille against Nice, that's a local derby, uh, is a makeup game, so the table will adjust itself a little bit. <laughs> it's all, you know, when people are not playing Champions League, this might be a good time to adjust things. And then on the weekend, I think the big one is clearly uh, PSG against Monaco. Um, Big name game, but not good team game. Not against OM uh, for sure. Lille is playing at L'Oréal. Can L'Oréal pull another one? And Brest against Lyonne, uh, uh, Olympique Lyonnais. Those Bre small Breton teams are really, really, really hard to uh, get points against. And then we are already in Portugal, where we had a cup game, uh, also semifinals between Prague and Porto. I really would have liked to see that one. Taremi gives Porto the lead, however, uh, it gets really bad for Porto in the second half. Having two player senses and of Luis Diaz in the 70th and then the 97th Uribe. Um, there has to be some fighting going on because I see a lot of yellow cards around there as well. And then Fran Sergio deep into stoppage time in the uh, 102nd minute. And I think that I heard something that there was an ambulance coming in as well. Like we had not too long ago, Belenenses Porto. I, I have not seen it, I just heard about it. Fran Sergio getting the equalizer for Braga. Benfica winning over Estoril in, this, uh, in, in, in the other semifinal. We have return legs coming in March. In the league. We had a derby between Porto and Boavista, where Boavista took a 2-0 lead at the half. Uh, and Porto had to fight back uh, Tarem and Sergio Oliveira with a penalty, get the equalizer. Given that the first game Porto won so easily, that's uh, definitely points dropped. Points dropped also for Benfica, only one Max more range. I mean, Benfica is at a horrible state at the moment. Seferovic gives them the lead in the 25th, Jan can equalize, and that's that. We don't, uh, don't have much more going. I'm just looking at, so, I mean, uh, the stats are completely don dominated by Benfica, but also uh, the offsides are overwhelmed by Mora Ranger. Benfica really, really, really bad. Uh, Braga winning at Santa Clara, that's, uh, that's a big win. And then Sporting, yesterday in the evening, uh, can get a 2 0 win. Uh, Jean Mario with a penalty. After a really stupid foul, I actually watched uh, the two goals, a really stupid penalty foul where, where the uh, Ferreira defender is just running over him. And then uh, pa Palinha with a pretty artistic goal. I mean, it's not a, a must watch, but it's a good goal 
to watch uh, against the Tunnel for Sporting. And with that, Sporting now 10 games ahead of Porto. 86% winning. Sporting is going to win the championship. And this is one of the most unexpected championships out there. Uh, Braga, as I said, leapfrogging Benfica. And again, lots of changes in the bottom half. I, it's just uh, nuts. Um, adjusting, yeah, because Tondela has had not played their move ahead of Belange. Uh, but, you know, other than that, not much change. Again, Sporting, the, definitely the positive uh, surprise of the season. Look at Porto and Benfica with the small red bars. We are not very happy with those. Expecting standings, Sporting will win this. I mean, eight points, that's pretty good. And they're not even the strongest team if you look at the blue bars on the front. But they have such a lead. Uh, Porto seems to have a soft landing into second spot and then Benfica and Braga. Benfica, that's it's really almost a tragedy. And then for the last, uh, Jürgen Swap between Passos and Vitoria de Guimaraes. I personally would prefer, uh, would always favor Guimaraes, but you know, Passos maybe has a chance. What do we have midweek? We have another makeup games, Guimaraes against Varenj. And then um, on the weekend, also not really the big game, we have Sporting against Portimonenj. Uh, we have Varenj against uh, Benfica, Maritimo against Porto. Well, that was it from the west of Europe. Let me know what you thought about the games that happened this week. Fill me in with a line below. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoy this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.